I know it's hard to break up conversations after such a morning of stimulating conversations, but we're going to try to pivot for just a moment and bring a little different conversation to the, the main stage here from an innovation perspective. But before I get started, I was sitting there, and from an entrepreneurial perspective, you're always looking for opportunities in the moment. And so I Googled quickly to see if there was a firm locally somewhere called maybe two men or two ladies with a dolly. Because every time I see these guys moving these chairs, lift them up, my back hurts. So I, I think we need to get a little help up here, but let's thank the support staff as well for their moving around logistics during the time in between sessions and so forth. It's good to be here again as a participant and contributing as a selected representative of Exertia. It's not the next new pharma drug, and I'll kind of explain that to you in a moment, but it's an open industry collaborative that I'll spend a little bit of time talking to you about today. Before I get started, I thought what I'd like to do is get to know sort of a profile of the audience very quickly from who's here. How many sort of are in the room that represent sort of the physician view of the healthcare system? Physicians. Industry, in the sense of you're in the technology space. Academia, some are cross-bred in that category. And from the government or regulatory perspective. I don't think I see anyone with the bright lights, but at least there's a mix here. Let me tell you a little bit about myself as to what inspired me today. And as someone said to me during the break, they said, well, you've got the sharpest hat. So I'm wearing one of my many hats today uh, in the representation of the group uh, that I'll represent today called Exertia. Let me take you back a few years, many, many years, as a young man growing up in a family of 14, of what has really ignited my lifelong passion in embracing transformation in the healthcare journey. Being raised as one of eight boys, six girls, 14 brothers and sisters, one mom, one dad, living around the world with a dad who was involved with diplomacy with the United Nations, we didn't use physicians in our obstetrics work at home. My mom delivered all of us with a midwife. And as a young boy, 10 years old or so, we had a midwife in Norway, Oslo, Norway, where we were living at that point, and we were given a challenge by our midwife. Now, we had to identify my mother's contractions as she was upstairs awaiting her most recent birth. And I was about 10 years old at that point. And our midwife knew we loved popcorn. And so she decided to give my mother a tin cup. And every time she had a contraction, she would drop a little popcorn kernel in a tin cup. And she would shake the cup when it got a little bit extreme. We had to run upstairs. So I missed my cue and ran up there at the last moment. And there was my mother going into birth. I was thrust as a young boy into a delivery experience. Unfortunately, I had a t-shirt on, and there my mother was going into birth, and the midwife had not yet been beckoned. And I helped my mother deliver one of my brothers at 10 years old. Fast forward, that experience placed an incredible memory on my life that I knew I did not want to be a physician. <laughs> that was out of the question. Second, it did leave me with the opportunity, and now having 14 brothers and sisters who were all born at home, and we all experienced that joy, that somewhere along the way that technology would help us bring about a connection in our family as now mobile became to the forefront of our social living and interactions. Second, the notion of social interactions. Fast forward to three years ago, at, my wife and I had our child, little boy, and she got caught up in the digital movement. And we went through an evaluation of apps. And she found this particular app. I won't use the names today, but I'll just give you the example. And she really fell in love with this app. This app began to track the stages of birth, track something called contractions. And I said to her, I said, you're going to go into delivery early if you keep letting that app stir your mind about you're ready. I said, those are false positives. Trust me, a man telling a woman false positives. Not the right signal you want to react to. <laughs> so in the later stage of her pregnancy, we are out on a fishing expedition. And she said, I'm great, let's go fishing. We had just visited the doctor the day before, and she went into this extreme level of map mapping on her contractions later in the day. I had a trip planned the next day to go do a speech, and she said to me, it's time. I said, no, 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 that app is wrong. Turn it off, false positives, we're gonna keep moving. He told you a couple more weeks. Well, when someone moves from the high-tech world to the high-touch world, and they reach out and grab you, they got your attention. She got my attention, and I reluctantly said, let's just go check it out, put your mind at ease, and we'll go on my trip, and I'll be back in two weeks. She was six and a half centimeters dilated and went into birth two hours later. Thankfully, that high-touch outreach allowed me to react beyond the app interactions that I began to see the value of how apps, as a part of the experience, might help her evolve in her experience of delivering our first child. So I share that story with you as to my journey as an entrepreneur that has led me to really come forth as an industry representative of the digital health movement to contribute to this industry collaborative that we think is bringing a voice to the experience transformation of healthcare. 
as we think about where we've been yesterday, and I put into context of different episodes, trailers versus features. We in healthcare have sort of been laggards in some instance from a context of experiences. And think about the advent of the internet. We've heard about the different evolutions of the, diff the different revolutions. And there's an everyday revolution that's happening right now called the me revolution, my experience. And through the eye of that beholder, we have to take it into consideration. We think about Yelp reviews. No one typically debates, we may disagree, but it's the perspective of someone's experience in that journey. And so we think about the advent of some of yesterday's representation of experiences using the internet. In healthcare, we call it e-health, telehealth, startups emerged. And then we come to today. We've got mHealth, we've got apps, we have wearables. But ultimately, as we think about where we are in this context of digital health, and we think about transforming health as an experience, how do we bring about a level of stability as we think about patients taking more control of their healthcare journey, interacting with their care provider, the care team, and having a direct influence on the outcomes of healthcare through this mobile platform that's ubiquitous in other areas of our lives. As we move forward in this journey and we think about digital health, recently there's been some publications with write-ups by both venture capitalists and others asking the question, is digital health dead? Well, I thought about that and I thought, this is interesting. I don't know if digital health is dead or it's been born, but it's a track in which we're currently focused on as the next evolution of transforming health as an experience. And many organizations have undertaken a collaborative role in this transformation to lead both around the standardization and the influence of that maturity so that we protect the interests of the patient, address the clinical obligations of the physician, meet the business requirements of the payor, and ultimately do it in a way that's hopefully harmonious that brings the consumer to, consumer to the forefront of that particular journey. Organizations, whether it's the FDA and their most recent efforts around entering the digital health frontier, the Consumer Technology Association and others, all have talked about this and delivered programs or oversight activities around this area. Hence, we recognize an opportunity with the launch of Exertia. And Exertia, give you a little context, stands for Experience Certified Certification Independent Alliance, Exertia. And when you think about the notion of apps and the number of apps that are proliferating in the marketplace, there is tremendous opportunity to bring about some structure in corralling the innovation economy around the use of apps in the marketplace. I've likened this to the notion of Appageddon. We've got a flurry of innovations happening with the next new app. I don't think I've met an app that has not been invented by someone before. And in the app world, I often liken myself to an appaholic because in the last four years, I've downloaded and used over 3,000 apps. I've tested, I've gone through my thumbing deficit disorder, clicking through them, deleting them. It is an order, trust me. And when you think about this world of Appageddon and the world of apps, we do not have a problem from a supply perspective. We have a demand problem. Today we've reached the point of over 300,000 apps and growing because that's the new preferred platform that we believe is gonna transform the consumer experience. But yet we have not seen the uptake from a day-to-day -day basis that consumers find the apps to be as prevalent in their day-to-day -day lives. According to Pew Research, the average consumer thumbs through 25 to 26 apps in a month. Of the top five, social, whether it's banking, travel, healthcare does not reach that level of activation on a monthly basis with the average consumer population. So we still have a tremendous opportunity ahead to demonstrate value that I like to refer to as a value-driven experience around this healthcare phenom called the introduction of apps. When I think about the challenges of the provider community and giving you a little bit about my professional experience, as an entrepreneur, about four years ago, one of my companies initiated some of the first activities around the notion of curating apps through both the clinical lens, i.e. the physician, and the sponsor lens of the payer and we created a process in which through our lab, we would certify through a multi-week usability review, our professional reviewers, masters, clinical leaders, would undertake a usability review with an app, looking at the app from clinical effect, motivational interviewing techniques, behavioral economics, messaging, security, privacy, all the elements that are important to ensure that app has been designed around the right construct of care and experience with the consumer. Working with the large healthcare system up in Morristown, New Jersey, Atlantic Healthcare System, we work with them to actually evaluate apps 
around a set of constructs in which they would work with their physicians to prescribe the apps as an integrated output of their electronic medical record, their EMR. The patients would then, apps such as MyFitnessPal, would consent to allowing their micro insights to be fed back to the physician, integrated through the workflow of the EMR system, so that the physician through their consultation would have insights around their behaviors away from that clinical and encounter. Now, what moved that experience and that example to the level of activation was when the CEO of the hospital, who happens to be the head of the VA today, Dr. David Shokin said, we have to bring about that gap of the consumer understanding the value. They created an in-hospital boutique with the digital concierge representatives who would consult with the patient, post their physical encounter with the doctor around the value of that wearable or that app as they were leaving that physical encounter. The uptake went from 7% in year one of the test to 87% in year two with that high touch intervention. So a multifaceted strategy that was allowing that particular app to move forward in that clinical environment. Example number two, Cigna Healthcare. 14 million consumers wanted to embrace the use of apps in connecting with their large national accounts. Again, consumer-driven healthcare was sponsored by consultant-driven healthcare. The consultant says this is the next new frontier to augment the population health strategies of that particular payor. The health plan was taking about seven to eight months to evaluate one app in the context of that experience. They came to us and said, can you help us evaluate and vet these particular apps so they pass through our particular process and move that forward in the context of that? We moved forward with them and vetted out over 60 unique apps that they would then recommend to their patients as a part of their population health initiatives with the criterion that align with their clinical objectives, security, privacy, and other elements that we put in place. One of the things that I recognized as an entrepreneur is that we could not do it alone. So we moved forward and looked for other industry meta brands who could come forward with the voice of higher visibility than we had to influence the adoption of this construct on a much broader scale. I thought as an entrepreneur I had the answer. I was early, but I wasn't wrong. We had 15 clients we thought we were heading down a pathway. And then the well dried up. We said, what's going on here? We started hearing the conversation around digital medicine. And so I went forth and found a willing group of organizations ready to embrace this conversation about 18 months ago. Hence, I joined up with the American Medical Association, American Heart Association, my organization, and HIMSS to bring forth this open collaborative in which we would contribute our early learnings, we failed along the way, and those insights to drive out this open mHealth app collaborative that could be a voice platform for both industry, academia, government, and others to drive influence around the adoption and use of apps as we move toward this frontier of digital medicine. It's been a wonderful journey as we brought this collaborative together, but we can't do it without others coming to the table in this construct around collaborative and collective intelligence. We need your voice, your organization, to join up with us as we begin to address the nuances and the values around utilization of apps or bots or other intervention experiences as those emerge on the new frontier relative to both content usability, operability, security, and alike. Let me highlight for you why this is important and what we've seen over the last few years. Because if we are going to face this industry head on, we must be prepared for our Equifax moment. And that is healthcare data today has a 10x value multiplier on the dark net than financial data. They want your data. And apps and wearables present significant vulnerabilities that exposes the patient or the physician to the siphoning of that data. And how can we collectively work together to provide criterions in place in the design of apps that we're making sure the apps are not releasing PII out to third party countries without the consent of the consumer. These are insights we've gained along the way as to why this was promoting us to drive this value to the industry. And when you think about some of the risk of apps today, you place an app that has vulnerabilities on your phone, you now have exposed your entire private network to vulnerabilities that could really put the consumer at risk from a privacy and security perspective. So we see a tremendous opportunity ahead to bring forth the launch of Exertia through a set of guidelines over 144 unique attributes that this collective collaborative is coming together around to drive the evolution of the adoption of apps and beyond to ensure that we recognize the interests of the patient the clinical team, and the sponsor of that healthcare experience 
over the next few years. And so as we think about the, noise, the notion of the voice of the consumer, the voice of the marketplace, and this me revolution, my experience, we believe that Exertia is poised to bring about that transformation. And as, as Eric referenced in his opening comments, and others, we need the industry to come together and collaborate around what are the principles. The FDA has placed a representative onto this body as a way of having a collaborative framework with their digital health initiatives. So we don't have all the answers, but we have a beginning process underway that these select organizations today have come together and are joining with us to move this process forward as a first generation. So what I'll end with, as the person who drew the short straw from my founding co-founders, Dr. Michael Hodgkins from the American Medical Association, Megan from the American Heart Association and Carlos Smith from HIMSS, as a representative of our founding board members from the Exertion Movement, I put out in front of all of you today, if you believe that the transformation of healthcare is on the frontier, it's open to the use of apps or other experiential frameworks, and you believe there's a voice in which you can bring to the table, we welcome your contributions. The guidelines will be published as the group moves through its first evaluative process starting this fourth quarter, and we will hope that this will begin to drive a step level of standardization as we move next towards the framework of validation and certification, and we welcome you to join us in that movement. So again, thank you for your time, and look forward to seeing your participation in the exertion as we move forward. Thank you.